Hey guys, how's it going? It's JDOSX here and welcome to Mini Tap Monday episode 6 where today I'm going to show you guys how to create some really cool looking blurry reflections that render ridiculously quickly. So if you've ever worked with blurry reflections before, you'll find that they look great but they take ages and ages to render. Well it turns out that if you're using mental ray to render your stuff, you can actually get some really good looking blurs that render ridiculously quickly, in fact faster than most re uh, reflections that don't have any blurring on them. So uh, to recap, you need to use Mental Ray for this, you can't use the Scanline Renderer unfortunately. The scene which I've got in front of me here just has some standard objects in them with no materials applied to them and is lit using a daylight system. What we're going to do is we're going to create a blurry reflection on the ground plane here, we don't really care about these objects here, but you can apply the same principle to anything pretty much. So we're going to open up our materials dialog and we'll just pick the first material. Notice how in this button here it says standard. This means that this particular material is the standard material. This material is a great place to start if you're using the scanline renderer, but we're going to be using mental ray, so instead we're going to be uh, changing this to a different type of material. To do that you just click the button and it brings up the material browser and we're going to go for an arch and design material, or it's actually architectural and design, but you know. So it's in the uh, mental ray right, right here, but if you can't see it, you just have to type in arc and design in the uh, search box up the top, and it'll pop up there. And this is sort of the equivalent of the standard material if you're using mental ray, and most of the things you have in uh, the standard material, there are equivalents in this one. Uh, as you can see, I'll just bring it up here, it's the base material we get is quite glossy and it already has some reflections going but to make it more evident I'm gonna pick the chrome metal preset and it's got a whole heap here, you have things like uh, ceramic, there's also glass and there's rubber and there's, it's, this is a really great place to start so we're gonna go for chrome and I'm just gonna drop that onto my ground plane and we're just gonna give that a render Now, as you can see, that render was um, that was pretty quick, and we got some really nice crisp reflections going there, but we want them to be blurred. So how are we going to implement this blurring? Well, as it turns out, in the uh, Arc and Design material, it gives us a few speed improvement options, and there's a particular one which actually causes things to blur out a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the reflection uh, part of the main material parameters rollout, and we're going to take a look at these optimization um, tools here and we're going to click fast interpolate what this means is that basically you, on the in the material you have a, have a particular points and you look at the points and you average the points out to get your reflection and it's the averaging of these points that gives you that blur so now that we've checked that box we'll just render it again And you may have to go into full screen to see this effectively, but now we've got a nice blur going on around the edges of our reflections, which looks pretty good, but one thing you'll notice is that the blur is only very slight, and we've also got some jagged edges going on. So how do, can we fix this? How can we fine-tune our blur? Well, to do that, we just have to go into the uh, fast glossy interpolation rollout, and this lets us control how this uh, speed optimization works. Uh, what we're going to do is to remove the jaggedness we're going to turn up the number of neighboring points which we can check. You'll notice that as we increase the number of neighboring points we average out using it increases the blur. So we're going to turn it up to about six or so and we'll go again. There we go so now not only is the blur smoother but the blur radius is actually now larger and this is sort of the effect we're going for and it's looking a bit more realistic now so how can you control this well as I said before in neighboring points to look up in this roller here uh, you, the, the smaller it is the, um, the the more crisp the image and the larger the number the, the greater the blur but how can you control this on a macro scale well if we look at our interpolation grid density this basically says how many points like how, how many points are close by that we can check against. If we decrease the resolution, that means all of our points to check against are more spread out and will create a bigger blur. So basically, if we turn this from half resolution to a fifth resolution, the blur would be much larger. And if we change it from half resolution to double resolution, it would be a lot smaller. I want to go for a larger blur, so I'm going to go for a quarter resolution. And we'll see what it looks like. And there we go, now our blur's more spread out and it's looking pretty good. 
But um, when a material in real life creates a blurry reflection, it also has a tendency to not actually reflect objects which are a certain distance away. In the arc and design material, you can actually create this reflection fall off very, fairly easily. The way you do that is you just open up the advanced rendering options rollout, and we go up to the reflections pane here. All we have to do is we have to turn on the maximum distance parameter, which, mean, which means that any models which are further than this distance away, it will not reflect. Now let's see, I want to trail it out just at the edge of the reflection, so we'll find out this sphere is about 27 units above it. So I'll set our max distance to approximately uh, 20, I think, and we'll see what it looks like. There we go, so it looks like I've overdone it a bit there. We'll, um, we'll extend it out to maybe, we'll try 40. There we go, that's a lot better actually. So as you can see, we've now just got this wisp of a blur and it fades out as the object gets further away. So that covers pretty much all the basics on creating these blurry reflections really quickly. There are some more options to check out in the Arc and Design materials, so feel free to have a play. And I should also mention that a lot of this can be applied to refraction as well. So you can create some really nice looking frosted glass that renders quickly and looks a lot better than in a lot of other methods. Um, these renders which you see, I did speed them up uh, to pass the time, but they took only about sort of 35 seconds each or so. Whereas I know if I'd used another method, it would have taken hours and hours and I would have had to turn the sample count down, so it would have looked really crappy. But anyway, as you can see, this works really well. It's really fast and it gives a really realistic result, which is quite surprising. So thank you very much for watching and I hope this has helped.